Today I'm looking at a drawing app. It's called Affinity Designer. For years I've been looking for a solid alternative to Adobe Illustrator, just like a really good vector drawing app. Affinity Designer started as a Mac app, but just recently they released their Windows Beta. Now the Mac app costs about $50, but the Windows Beta is free. Just by watching the little preview video on their website, you can tell that this app does a lot of things and it aspires to be a lot of things. It shows them creating layouts and manipulating drawing textures and doing all sorts of different things. When you have an app that does so much, it's hard to kind of review all of it. So I'm gonna be focusing mainly on the vector aspect of it and drawing and illustrating with it. Now, since the app does so many different things, they have workspaces within the app that they refer to as personas. Now the persona that I'm going to be looking at today is the draw persona. There's one for pixel, which is for rendering pixels. And there's another one that's built just for exporting assets, which is kind of nice if you're into that sort of thing. So let's take a look at some of the tools in the draw persona. It has all the tools you're looking for in a good solid vector drawing app. There's the pen tool. There's the free drawing tool. There's the black selection arrow tool and that little white selection arrow tool that you're familiar with from Illustrator. Looking at the pen tool, I like it a little bit better than Illustrator's. Why? Because the hit area on those anchor points is bigger and easier to touch. Even when I'm using like a super accurate mouse, I often miss the anchor points when I'm trying to click on them in Adobe Illustrator. And when I'm using a drawing tablet with a stylus, it's even harder to hit those points, especially as our screens get bigger or add more pixels and become higher density. Another thing I really like about the app is how it handles snapping. Snapping is where when you're drawing a shape and you want it to align perfectly with another shape somewhere on your artboard, it just kind of snaps to it when you get kind of close to it. Often in Adobe Illustrator and other drawing programs, I toggle this feature on and off and usually I keep it off because it gets a little too snappy. And sometimes I just want it to be close to another element and I find it just shifting over a little too fast. And instead of using snapping, I wind up eyeballing a lot of my artwork. Eyeballing is kind of a weird term kind of gross. And like I said before, most apps I turn off snapping because it's a little too snappy. <laughs> I don't have a better word. I need a better word. So Affinity Designer has this whole snapping toolbar. Now the feature in that that I like the most is the idea that you can set a tolerance on the snapping. I set it down pretty low. I like it around like five or six. If you're someone who likes things to kind of jam together really quickly, you can set it up higher and it's going to snap more. And then there's all sorts of other checkbox settings that you can kind of dive into and tweak as you go that I had never even thought were possible, but now that they're there are so nice. Now when you take those big hit areas and you put them together with these new snapping features, the freehand drawing tool becomes really, really cool. It's not like it's doing anything special or new or cool. It's just the fact that you can go from one end of an element to another end of the element and draw lines between them. It's just really nice. Usually in Adobe Illustrator, when I'm freehand drawing, I turn off snapping because it wreaks havoc. So I toggle it off and I go back in and then I have to zoom in and like align all my lines manually by taking each anchor point and reshuffling it. This saves a lot of time. And it's just not the anchor points and snapping that I really like in this. There was a bunch of little tiny features uh, that just stood out to be as being nice little design touches. For example, the layers will show you what will happen when you start to rearrange them. There are a lot of crazy things you could do with shapes, like adjusting the amount of points on the shape just on the fly and then messing with a bunch of variables to that shape and it doesn't take very long to come up with some like pretty unique things more or less by accident. You can also save your history. For example, at the end of the day, if you close your file, when you open it the next day, if you've saved it, you can actually keep all your history in there and do multiple undos going back after you open your file. Also, I have to mention, this is really good at opening Photoshop files. I've used a lot of apps before that can open Photoshop files, but it renames the layers for you or forgets the layer names at all. It loses your guidelines. It just forgets your layer folders and fonts. So many apps screw up fonts when you open up a Photoshop file, but it's all here. It opens it up really, really well. I was super impressed. Under the fun part, we get to talk about the things I did not care for. These are really nitpicks. Things like the interface is a little too dark for me. It needs more contrast. The This is the room I work in. It's really well lit. I've got two big windows here. And so there was a lot of things I couldn't tell when a tool was selected, for example, because there wasn't enough contrast between what tool was toggled on and off. And some of the menus, like the snapping menu I mentioned before, I couldn't tell what was a checkbox because there wasn't enough contrast around those elements to show it up. I used this app for two days and I had no idea how the eyedropper tool worked. I just figured it out this morning. So it's over here by the color palette. Now what you have to do is you have to click and drag off of it around your canvas 
choose the color that you want, and then this little circle next to it is going to turn into that color. Then you select the object you're looking for, you move over, and you tap it, and then you can fill it with the color that you're trying to fill it with. Now, as I was drawing this little building illustration, I ended up like changing it to more of a grayscale illustration because I didn't have an eyedropper tool. And even if I did know how the eyedropper tool worked, I don't really like how it works. I want something more traditional. The way it selects multiple shapes is very different than the way Illustrator selects multiple shapes. If you select any part of a shape in Illustrator, it's going to grab it and make it active. In this app, it's a little bit different. You actually have to highlight the entire element that you're trying to select in order to activate it, to select it. This is really just a preference thing. I prefer to be able to select things a little bit quicker, uh, not have to kind of drag over the entire element to do it. The other thing that kind of drove me nuts is that every element that you draw becomes its own layer. So if you're doing a really detailed illustration, it doesn't take long for the layers pile to become completely unusable with just dozens and dozens and dozens of layers. If I'm doing just a little bit of hatching on a comic illustration, boom, I could create 40 layers in a couple seconds. I think a lot of the changes that I was just mentioning between this app and Adobe Illustrator come from this app trying to do a lot of different things for a lot of different audiences. The way it handles selection, the way it handles layers reminds me of an app for the Mac called Sketch, which is more of a layout graphic design tool. And since this app does a lot of layouty things as well, I think uh, some of the vector drawing elements suffer because of that. So to answer the question I asked at the beginning, could this replace Adobe Illustrator? Yes, it can, but for me, it won't. Basically the core tools that you need in a good vector app are there, but a lot of the little elements that make it efficient and fun to use aren't there yet. I think if somebody is really gonna take on Illustrator and do it well, they really have to focus on the vector illustration aspect of it and not worry so much about some of the other things you can do with the app. And ultimately Affinity to me feels like a layout app that has some really amazing vector tools to it, not an amazing vector app that can also happen to do layouts. So drawing just isn't its core focus. But I do know who this app is fantastic for. I have a lot of friends who are web designers, web developers who need a pro level uh, layout kind of app similar to this. People who need to open Photoshop files or maybe have to jump into Illustrator to create like SVG icons every now and then. Right now it costs, I think it's still $50 a month to get Adobe Creative Suite. That's the cost of this entire app. And if you're someone who's only using Photoshop or Illustrator, you know, once a week, twice a week, maybe once or twice a month, $50 a month is an insane amount of money to pay to do that. And that's where this app is really kind of awesome. And that's those are the people who I think will really love something like this because it is good enough. It is a pro level app, but you only pay for it once. And if you're only going to use it occasionally, it fits that bill well, especially when you get into how well it opens Photoshop documents. So that's my review. Uh, if I missed anything or you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'm also on Twitter. I think that's it for this week. Thank you for watching the video to the end because you're awesome. I'll see you in probably a week or two.